Hello. Hello. Uh, Hello. This is John V with the planning uh, department. Um, we'll be getting started probably at six o'clock. Okay. So, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. Very good. I'm, I'm patiently waiting. Thank you. Okay. No problem. All right. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
<clears throat> Everyone can keep their mics uh, muted. That would be helpful. Thank you. Could, is it too early for me to get a quick uh, procedural question in? No, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, we we understand that the board's got several things. Uh, my I'm just sitting here uh, for my wife. Actually, she's going to uh, address the the board, um, the commission, the zoning members. But uh, so I we will we'll wait our turn. Um, do do I need to do something uh, with my yeah. uh, Zoom page to to make you know? Is there some something I should do with the settings? No, no, you're 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 good with the microphone and anything. The zoning examiner will come on okay. at six o'clock and he'll he'll uh, explain how everything will be Got run. It. Great. Okay. The rules and that, and then he how that will be proceed, and he will call on people when it's time to do all that. And, gotcha. And if Great. Okay. Thanks very much.
It's six o'clock, so we'll get started. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's public hearing. My name is John Urino. I'm the zoning examiner for the city of Tucson. I conduct rezoning hearings on behalf of the mayor and council and make findings of fact, which I put into a written report along with my recommendation, which I then send along to the mayor and council for their consideration and for their final decision. My report will be based on the information submitted to me, which includes the rezoning application, the staff report, all written approvals and protests, all correspondence, and the testimony given at tonight's public hearing. I will also include in the record all documents submitted to me up to the close of the public hearing. A recording of tonight's testimony is being made. If requested, a transcript will be prepared. With that in mind, if you choose to testify, I would ask you to please speak clearly and begin your testimony by stating your name and your address. The process after tonight's hearing goes like this. First, I complete, complete a preliminary report within five working days at the close after the close of the public hearing. Then I prepare a written report. The final report will be issued two weeks after the close of the public hearing. For those of you who wish to receive a copy of the preliminary report and are not a listed party on the case, please send an email to tucsonrezoning at tucsonaz.gov. Again, tucsonrezoning at tucsonaz.gov or call the Planning and Development Services Department. A copy of the final report will be available from the Planning and Development Services Department and will be posted on their website. And I send the final report to the mayor and council. At the scheduled public hearing on the case, the mayor and council will then vote on the matter based on my recommendation, along with other factors. We have three cases on the docket for this evening. The first case is case TPENT 0223-00014, Sonoran Campus, Swan, Original City Zoning. Uh, Mr. Beal, are you presenting the staff report? Yep. Uh uh, Gabriel from our office will be right. doing that. Mr. Slater, would you like to go ahead? Yes, I would. Um, apologies for any noise. My kid's at the box, so I'm kicking around downtown uh, for this meeting. Um, so this request is a request to us to assign city zoning I-2 to a parcel that was zoned uh, county I-2. Um, this request is uh, made by Mike Chikowski, uh, the city of Tucson. Staff report finds it's appropriate. We'd, uh, we'd also see an extension of the uh, major streets and routes uh, overlay to accommodate for the, uh, the, the bit of swan that's running through this uh, just recently annexed parcel. Thank you, Mr. Slater. Uh, would the applicant like to be heard? Uh, hello, Mr. Urino. I do not have comments. Thank you, Mr. Chikowski. Published. Thank you. Uh, is anyone else in the audience wishing to be heard on this case? Yes, uh, I'm Scott Robidoux. I'm with the Tucson Airport Authority. I'm the manager of planning. My address is 7250 South Tucson, um, Boulevard Suite 300, and I'm representing the Tucson Airport Authority. Uh, the Tucson Airport Authority approves the, uh, I think this is a rezoning that is proposed to go through, and we look forward to working with the city of Tucson. Thank you, Mr. Robidoux. Would anyone else in the audience like to be heard on this case? Hearing no one, I will close the public hearing on case TPENT 0223-00014. Our next case is case uh, TPENT 0223-00013, first in Foothills PAD R3 to PAD. Mr. Beal? Yes. This is a request by Brian Underwood of the Planning Center on behalf of the property owner, First and River Storage LLC, to, to rehunt a 1.03 acre parcel from R3 residential to planned area development pad zoning. The rezoning site is located at this point at East Foothills Drive, approximately 1100 um, 
feet north of the First Avenue and River Road intersection on the east side of First Avenue. The pad proposes to allow for the site to develop with a single use self storage. Immediately south of the site is the first and river storage rezoned from three to C1 in 2015, a climate controlled facility with little to no unit vacancies. While under common own, this facility and the proposed within the pad will not be affiliated. A pad is proposed in order to implement the goals of the Catalina Foothills Subregional Plan, which provides land use policy for the site and ensures that the subject site is developed as a low intensity, low impact use that is mindful of the site's unique constraints. The, the proposed project is to develop the uh, approximately 31,000 foot climate controlled storage facility with a covered loading zone and eight parking spaces and landscape areas. The proposed structure will be designed with two stories above ground and one story below ground with a maximum building height of 24 feet. The proposed building has been positioned on the edge of the property close to First Avenue because of the grade differential across the site. The presence of residential uses nearby and the existing drainage that runs along the eastern and southern boundary of the site. The building location uh, effectively establishes a transition across the site and then uh, uh, West architectural design with um, is and high uh, highly reflective materials are not proposed for this to be avoided. Okay. The um, proposed permitted use for the pad is a really a sole use single sole use is what's being proposed is a personal storage. There is uh, the pad does allow for other permitted see uh, uses that are allowed in the unified development code code but those are subject to the amendment procedures in section five of the of the pad it needs to go through a review to see if it's a major or minor change to the pad again the building height is 24 feet and the fur and uh, foothills uh, pad request to rezone the site to a pad is consistent with plan tucson and the catalina Foothills subregional plan a plan is not required and approval of the requested pad zoning is appropriate. No other conditions are required at this time. Uh, as of today's date, there's been one approval and nine protests. Uh, nine of the protests have been outside the 150 foot uh, location. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beal. Uh, would the applicant like to be heard? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Urino. Uh, good evening. My name is Brian Underwood, and I'm with the Planning Center, uh, Two East Congress here in Tucson. I'm joined by a couple of my colleagues here, Lexi Wellett and Garrett Aldrit. And I also have uh, the property owner and developer, Scott Schultz, on the phone as well. And uh, thank you, everybody, for, for being here this evening. Um, have a brief presentation uh, to go through. Um, try not to, to be too redundant with what Mr. Beal already covered. He, he gave an excellent presentation. Uh, but I did want to touch briefly on and reiterate uh, why, why we're proposing a planned area development or a PAD for this project. Uh, it's to, to more easily, uh, because a pad can more easily uh, be tailor fit to the site and the surrounding context of the area and, and the terrain. Uh, as you can see in this, in this photo here, it's, it's, uh, it's got a bit of a filter on it there, but this is looking south, southeast across the site. Uh, and you can see the existing self-storage facilities uh, down, in, down in the background there. And then uh, the existing homes up on the hill in uh, Northridge Villas there. So uh, if you wanna move to the next slide, thank you. Um, so as John mentioned, we are within the Catalina Foothills subregional plan. And we're also within map detail three, which is the river, uh, the river first annexation area. And that area um, designates this property as medium high intensity urban uh, and E category there. And the reason again why we're why we're proposing the pad is that that MHIU designation 
uh, although it would allow for a zone that allows for self-storage, which is the PI zone or park industrial, that park industrial zone uh, isn't exactly the, uh, the most appropriate zone for this area, given the surrounding context um, that you can see here on this next slide. Uh, from a land use standpoint, and then and then I'll also kind of get into why it's um, why PI wouldn't be compatible from a zoning standpoint as well. Um, so there you can see the the property again uh, outlined in the middle uh, in black, and it has the uh, the kind of pinkish red fill on it. There, it's about one acre in size. So that uh, existing R three zoning that it has isn't quite conducive to, to building uh, apartments on, on such a small site, particularly because of the grade differential and the wash that cuts off that, that southern portion of it there, or, or cuts across that southern portion of it there, I should say. And really, the, the property is, is mostly flat for a, a good portion of it um, as you get down about 100 feet past um, the northern boundary from Foothills Drive there, it tends to flatten out. But for that first 100 feet, it slopes down quite a bit by about 15 to 20 feet uh, down, to the, down to the lower part of the property there. And then it also sits about 20 feet lower than, uh, than First Avenue to the west, and also about 40 feet lower than the North Ridge Villas to the east there. So they sit up on the hill, this property kind of sits down in a hole or in a in a bowl, if you will. Um, we also have an assisted living facility to the east of us there. Um, the existing First and River self storage facilities to the south, as well as a car wash and a and a Walgreens that's up against River Road. And then there are some apartments on the west side of uh, of First Avenue, and then uh, single family homes on the north side of Foothills Drive there. Taking a look at the surrounding zoning context, uh, as you can see from the south there, uh, we have it's predominantly C1 zoning. Uh, the, the existing self storage to the south is also zoned that C1 zone. And then the assisted living to the east of us is zone C1. Again, the property uh, currently is, is zoned R3. And then you have the um, Northridge Villas zone TR. Uh, to the east of us there. And so, as you can see, um, you know, proposing a, a PI park industrial zone in this location wouldn't exactly make a, a lot of sense given the, the surrounding zoning context. And the PAD allows us to um, tailor fit, basically propose a C1 zone, but tailor fit to the site and the proposed use and and uh, the terrain of, of the site as well, the, the physical characteristics of it. Mr. Underwood, could I ask a question on that part of your presentation, please? Absolutely. Sure. So, um, I mean, park industrial zoning would permit this use, correct? That's correct, yes. And park industrial zoning is a permitted use under map detail three of the Catalina Foothills sub-regional plan, correct? Uh, that is correct, yes. And commercial zoning is not a permitted use under the Catalina Foothills sub-regional plan, correct? Um, that is correct. The C1 and the commercial zones are not permitted. However, the PAD zone is. Uh, yeah, I get that. So if you're gonna, if the property owner intends to develop this as a, uh, you know, the indoor self-storage development, other than the fact that it would be labeled park industrial, why would not, why would that zoning not be appropriate for this parcel? If the use is going to be the same, why does it matter what the name of the zone is? The park industrial zone is permitted under the Catalina Foothills sub-regional plan, the commercial zoning is not permitted. So why don't you just apply for park industrial zoning? And that's an excellent question, Mr. Urino. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll answer that. And I'll, I'll also defer to Mr. Beal to answer that as well. But as I understand it, typically um, what rezoning to park industrial would be classified as would be a spot zone. 
So we would be proposing um, a zone that's unlike any other in the area and also allows some more intensive uses um, that well, are- you could, you, you could deal with that by having the conditions say, we're only permitting the self-storage that the property owner wants but, to accomplish. But Mr. Reno, this is John Beale. That, the city's office said that when you apply for a any zone, it's all you get all the uses of that zone. So anybody coming in can have all the uses for for the park industrial or the commercial, um, and and then um, uh, for that way. So and then the the other the plan for the pad was for any uses that weren't um, going to be. Um, non-residential the path allowed to the path zone was the uh, was another zone you could apply for for non non-residential uses so it could be for, for that area but it didn't allow the 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 c1 or the um other zones because there's more around the around the uh the activity center because they also have different uses. I have no idea why that, why they, the plan actually the Catalina had the PI, except for the fact that a lot of the PI uh, uses are in um, indoors. So I'm gonna wonder it came in from the- when, and, and to further answer your question, Ms. Urino, so that is one of the things that we've covered in the back half of the, the planned area development document. So in the implementation section, We've specified that basically anything that would be considered potentially more intensive than uh, self storage would require going all the way back through basically a, another rezoning. So a major amendment to the pad. Um, and, and because self storage is such a, a quiet, low traffic use, virtually anything else that would be, be proposed here would have to go through that rezoning process. But but can't the property owner can't the property owner agree to conditions on the on the property that would make park industrial zoning, which is a permitted use, just agree to condition to limit the property's use to that, unless the property owner wants to have the flexibility down the road to not have it be self storage. I don't you know I don't know I, you know better than I do on that, Mr. Uh -huh. Underwood. Uh, Mr. Urino, I, I think if there was a, a way, um, if staff and, uh, you know, the, if, if City of Tucson could make that happen, um, I think the property owner would be amenable to, uh, to a, a different zone that would still allow for the self-storage. Okay, thank you very much. Go, I didn't mean to interrupt your presentation. Go ahead. Oh, no, no problem. Uh, so one of the, the primary uh, public comments that we heard um, was, was about traffic on uh, well, traffic congestion and a, a serious increase in traffic on Foothills Drive as a result of this project. And also that Foothills Drive is, is more of a, a residential street. And so uh, this photo here is, is of East Foothills Drive looking northeast. And, and it, it does have um, quite a, a wide right of way. Um, Foothills Drive is a 90 foot wide right of way. It functions as more of a collector street that um, local residential streets funnel out onto, and then this collector provides access directly to the arterial streets um, adjacent to it. So First Avenue, namely. And I've been out to the property, so I'm familiar with that. Yeah, um, and and so one of the the things that I wanted to to really emphasize is. The amount of traffic that self storage generates is very, very low. Um, and in particular, this proposed self storage facility, given its size uh, and the fact that it will be by appointment only, will be will have even even fewer trips um, coming and going on a daily basis. And so, what we're anticipating is no more than about five trips a day. Uh, and that's based on um, data from the existing facility to the, the facilities to the south there. Uh, the, and the, um, the, your submittal in the staff report indicates two numbers. One was 45 trips per day 
and one was one to two trips per day. And I, I gather the one to two trips per day is the property owner's estimate based on his or her current operation to the south. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. The, uh, the other the four, number is from the Institute of Traffic Engineers. That's a basic estimate. Yeah. And I, what I saw was that's an estimate simply based on the square foot of the parcel. Is that right? Uh, the square footage of the use. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. So you haven't you haven't done a traffic study, is that right? Uh, we have not done a traffic study based on uh, the low trip generation for the proposed use. Okay, please go ahead. All right. Um, one of the other major concerns uh, that was voiced by by the neighborhood um, was the loss of vegetation um, and particularly development within the wash that comes. A, cuts across the southern portion of the property, but it, it um, flows north-south to the east of us there. And uh, that wash area is going to be preserved. And, and what I've tried to do here with the preliminary development plan is to show um, the areas that will remain off-site and all, as natural open space that will be undisturbed, as well as um, natural uh, open space on the site and, and areas that perhaps will be enhanced as well. And so uh, I've highlighted everything in green here to, to point out that there, there are a couple parcels here along the west side that are owned by Pima County. Um, and these are where basically they're, they're um, owned by the county because it's the slope coming off of First Avenue here. Right. And so these will remain as as open space. Um, in addition to that, we'll we'll continue to have some open space up along the the sloped um, the, the slope along Foothills Drive. And then obviously everything within the wash will remain natural. And then these parcels over here, um, they're privately owned, but they're also uh, they're basically rendered. Uh, unusable because of the, the wash coming through there and, and the floodplain that's associated with it. And then you also have some additional open space outside of the green area that's on the slope coming down from North Ridge Villas um, and, and north of Foothills Drive here as well. But um, So am I, under, am I understanding the graphic correctly that only within the black dotted line will there be work done? Yeah, basically only within right here this sort of the green shoot. in the middle there yeah. in the green yeah this area right here in the middle so the only disturbance will be for the the actual building itself and then for uh the the parking lot and driveway sure and what there is is what we're contending with here is is a uh, a slope and or a, excuse me a wash encroachment line and so that's what you see here on the uh on the on the image is this red line and that is really the the limit as close as we could get to that wash and so any of the other vegetation uh, that is inventoried from the site uh, we will be doing a full native plant preservation plan and inventory and then we'll be salvaging some of those plants uh, next to the wash area to to sort of enhance and, and stabilize that a bit more as well and then there would be a fence put up around the perimeter of, of the facility here and, and the, the wash limit. And uh, the entire loading area would also be enclosed within the building here. So there wouldn't be any um, you know, noise or um, um, you know, sound from, from uh, people unloading and, and loading their stuff outside here closer to the, to the other side of the property. Um, on that note, one of the other uh, topics that was raised by the by the surrounding neighborhood was uh, hours of operation, and I believe there was a a comment about hours of operation at, at ten o'clock at night. And I just wanted to specify that the hours of operation for this facility will be seven a um, seven a.m. to seven p.m. And uh, only under very special circumstances would that ever be um, extended for, for a, an individual that needed to get into their unit past those hours. And 
I think lastly, the the uh, only other concern that uh, I wanted to briefly touch on was that of increased noise, air, and um, and um, no noise noise and air pollution. And um, I just wanted to specify that given the fact that this is a use that doesn't generate a lot of traffic, um, doesn't have a lot of activity, we wouldn't expect that there would be um, a lot of uh, air pollution or noise that would that would occur. And in terms of any light pollution, everything that will be um, any parking lot lighting will be dark sky compliant. Uh, and then any signage on the building would also be dark sky compliant, compliant as well, and would be oriented out to First Avenue, not back towards um, the neighborhood to the to the east there. Okay. And with that, I'll open it up to any questions. I have two more, uh, if that's okay. Uh, the first is, you know, that's quite a drop off there from the road down to the where the building is going to be built. I mean, have you guys studied or has your client studied the feasibility of what that driveway is going to look like? Yes, absolutely. And and um, I'm glad you brought that up because that is another another one of the topics that was raised. Um, so with the driveway, we've looked at what that percent grade would be. Uh, the maximum would be a 10 percent grade. And we're we've designed it to be more of a five to six percent grade. And we've also widened out um, the entrance slightly there as well. And anything that, um, you know, the driveway that gets built will also be armored um, and it will accommodate any drainage, um, you know, with, with drainage structure so that we're not continuing to have the erosion that, that uh, is occurring here today on the property. And then the same kind of question on, just on the construction. Acts, I mean, but I don't know, you know, will that be the construction entry? It's just on, you know, Foothills Drive. Who right, I'll call you. Um, that is an excellent question. Um, we hadn't really discussed the the construction access at this point. Well, um, if it can't, if it, 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 it's great to rezone it, but if it can't be built, where are you, right? Absolutely, yeah, and and uh, the property owner does own the facility to the south. So if necessary, there needed to be some sort of a, a connection there temporarily for for construction. Okay. That, so but that was my sec. I I lied. I have three. My second question <laughs> was, um, why aren't you why aren't you suggesting access through the parcel to the south? So we're not suggesting any access to the south there due to that wash that comes across there. So I'm not even sure if if we could do a temporary access there for construction given given the wash. Um, and also this facility is not meant to be connected to the facility to the south in any way. It's meant to operate as a standalone. Sure. Okay. And then the the last, um, I think. Well, I'll, I'll think of it later. Okay, I appreciate it. I, I'm gonna ask, there are two people who requested to speak tonight and I'm gonna take them in the order the request came in. Um, the first is Darsha Doran. Is it on yeah. Go ahead. Just keep. Hello. Doran uh, or Doran, and I apologize with a name like Urino, I should always get other people's names correct, but I don't. Can you hear me? I sure can. Please go ahead. Okay. Let me address this to Mr. Underwood first. Mr. Underwood, um, I'm the one that said 10 o'clock in the evening, and that's because um, about a week before we were contacted, we saw people moving in or out at 945 in the evening. Now, this is probably your exception to the rule, as you pointed out, but I'm not sure that that is, you know, that could be pretty consistent if you ask me. Okay. And then... Um, only the people in Northridge Villas that live 100 feet, 150 feet could oppose. And the people that live 400 feet were notified. That leaves um, 
a, a large number of people who were not informed. And the reason that you got approvals is because you neglected to include the information that the ingress and egress would be on Foothills Drive. That was not included, which is why you did receive approvals. Okay, and then I have more to read. Um, the fact that the entrance and exit for the self storage unit 31,000 square feet was on Foothills Drive was omitted on both the text and in the schematic drawings that were sent to us. The, in, this information would have greatly impacted, impacted people's decisions to approve or oppose uh, the uh, project. The River Road and First Avenue intersection is busy throughout the day and into the evening. There is already a high rate of accidents at this intersection. Traffic often backs up due to patrons entering and exiting the four established businesses between River Road and Foothills Drive. At times, drivers are stuck in the intersection, the First and River intersection when lights change. The median that separates north and southbound traffic on First Avenue directly impacts drivers attempting to make a left turn into First Avenue from Foothills Drive. Some traffic exiting First Avenue businesses must proceed to First Foothills Drive before being able to turn into lanes heading south on First Avenue. This project will first further increase congestion at the intersection of First and Foothills Drive. Foothills Drive is one of the main entryways for two large HOAs and a number of side residential streets. I walk the street every day with my dog going down past the drug and alcohol, not assisted living facility. It's called Montere. Um, when I drop, when I walk and when I look out of my house, I see cars going up and down it all of the time because many of these people use that as access to get into even via Entrada. Um, some traffic on First Avenue, oh, I read that, I'm sorry. Foothills Drive is one of them, I read that too. Sorry, I'm very nervous. Um, the schematic drawing of the entrance to the third building does not indicate a turning lane into the proposed facility. Obviously, washes on both sides of the road restrict the possibility of widening the road, 90 feet or not. You do have washes on both sides. During construction, there will be um, the, the road during construction traffic on the road will be severely limited, thereby slowing down and backing up traffic into the residential areas. There is a tunnel under Foothills Drive to accommodate monsoonal rain. At times, areas in the wash contain water. Signif I know you've said you've dealt with this problem. Significant runoff pours off the drive, Foothills Drive and flows down. I think it's more in some spots 25 to 30 feet rather than 15 to 20, uh, the, the, the embankment. In one area, erosion has already occurred on the asphalt of Foothills Drive. The existing wash is a green space, which you've already said you're going to handle. Um, the self-storage project will increase traffic and congestion and uh, traffic congestion and traffic accidents. And I said while adding to noise, light, and air pollution, and while they're building this, this facility, there certainly will be dust, noise, light, and air pollution. Um, those who granted approval for the project felt that it would deter the homeless from camping in the area. Others feel that the third building may increase crime in the area. North Woodville is, is working on a petition to oppose the uh, third self-storage unit. And as to the hill, if there's erosion already, I'm not quite sure. And if you don't have a plan for that, getting that road down there, I, I, you know, I really question this whole project. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. Um, you know, for the record, I have to ask you to go ahead and state your address, please. My address is 5077 North Campana Drive. Thank by you the very way, much. Oh, yeah. by the way, one of the people that lives within that 150 um, foot range uh, at 5033 did not even receive information that this was going to take place. Now, I don't know whether it was lost in the mail or what, but she was totally oblivious of it. And she definitely would have said no. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We also had a request to speak from Michael Campbell. Mr. Campbell, please start with your name and address. Thank you. Uh, my name is Michael Campbell. My address is 5935 East Hampton Street, Tucson, Arizona, and uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk here today um, and uh, appreciate the opportunity just to, to be a part of the public process and uh, and figure out how do we resolve these land use issues. Um, so I'm a student at the University of Arizona and was just looking at the 
uh, sub-regional plan, the Catalina Foothills sub-regional plan. And one of the things that I noticed when I was looking at the sub-regional plan was that the parcel itself is supposed to be uh, for a community activity center. And I think that's called out specifically in the, in the plan. And it's supposed to have bike and pedestrian access from the nearby neighborhood. Um, you know, there are so many, I'll just keep it in the facts, I guess. Um, I'm sorry, I have about 500 open tabs here and I'm trying to figure out which one has my notes in it. So, uh, um, this is not a horse race. Take your time, Mr. Campbell. Okay, thank you. A uh, little nervous with the public speaking. I'm, I know I'm not the first to feel that way. Um, and I just kind of wonder if this meets the purpose of a PAD. Um, PAD is defined in the UDC in section 3.5.5. Uh, with a purpose of enabling and encouraging comprehensively planned development in accordance with adopted plans and policies. And, uh, you know, it kind of gets to the meaning of comprehensively planned. Does it accord with the, with the sub-regional plan? Um, and the sub-regional plan calls for uh, a community activity center there. And the community activity center is supposed to have medium intensity mixed use areas designed to provide goods and services needed generally on a weekly basis, along with compatible medium to high density housing types. And this is my understanding of, of the plan and how it identifies that parcel. Um, and there's no housing types as part of the plan and there's generally no services that are needed on a weekly basis by any of the residents of that neighborhood. Um, I think if there were, it would be the sort of thing where you'd be seeing higher traffic impact or have a need to provide bike or pedestrian access from the neighborhood um, if it was to serve the, the people of that neighborhood. So I'm just uh, kind of confused as to how this, this would accord with the, with the sub-regional plan or if a plan amendment would need to be gone through in order to, to, to put this in. Um, and I'm additionally a little confused as to what exactly a low impact development is, if this is a 31,000 square foot development. Um, you know, we heard in the presentation that apartments are not feasible here because of the grade on site. You know, if we can build a three story structure with one story below grade and uh, two floors above grade and about 10,000 foot footprint, just based on 31,000 divided by three, you know, I, I fail to understand how, how some amount of housing is not possible here in a mixed use facility, which is really my understanding of, of what pads are, are intended to be used for. Um, and then finally, one of the requirements for these development proposals, I believe, is to identify proposed amenities um, that are on or near the site and the Pima County Master Trails Plan, uh, as I recall, and this is this is worth double checking on, but I think the name of that wash, which is identified in the proposal as an unnamed wash, but I think the name of that wash is Pima Wash. And I believe that there is um, in the Master Trails Plan, uh, a proposed single track route on Pima Wash going up through the foothills and you know, I live outside the area. I live outside the 150 foot radius. Um, but that kind of, you know, non-car transportation is important to me because I get around on a bike. And uh, one of the times I don't get around on a bike is when I have a kid with me, my kid with me. And it's, it's just a matter of safety. Um, we were considering, um, doing preschool with him up in the foothills this, this last academic year. And it was something that just, just wouldn't have worked because of the lack of, uh, of access um, through the road network up there. Everything puts me on about, you know, a four or a six lane road that's just not safe for a little kid. And, um, you know, get, getting that stuff right with the, uh, 
you know, with the non-car access, with the bike pedestrian access. I know it might seem like a trivial point to some of you, but it is really, um, I apologize for the emotion I'm showing here. It's just, you know, uh, you know, for me, it's a matter of freedom of mobility with my kid. And more than that, it's a matter of, um, of safety with my kid. So I thank you for hearing that. Um, and uh, I, I thank you for the opportunity to speak and the opportunity for the time today. Uh, thank you, Mr. Campbell. I don't think uh, bike riding is trivial. Uh, Non-car transportation is not trivial. In this particular case, if you were to ride down that wash, you'd end up uh, at a concrete culvert that goes under First Avenue, which is probably not where you'd want to be. But uh, Well, probably not, no. Yeah. But uh, I, I appreciate um, your participation this evening, and I would uh, welcome you to join any other uh, hearings we have if land use is yeah. a, an interest of yours. Thank, thank you, sir. And just for future reference, you know, access down that wash from Foothills Drive, I think, is something that, uh, you know, is is a viable means of, of bike and pedestrian access to the site for any kind of multi-use neighborhood facility. So sure. thank you. Great. Uh, would anyone else in the audience like to be heard on this case? Yes, I would. Please go ahead and start with your name and address. Thank you. Uh, Tammy Wolf. Um, 5043 North Campana. If you were to put um, the site plan back up, you can see my property. Um, we look directly at the facility. Um, what, um, what confuses me is if this property is all owned by the same gentleman, why he's not using the access he's already been given onto the property for this third building. I know there's a wash, but just that wash goes under foothills. It goes under first. It goes in a concrete barrier, like you said, it goes under river. Why can't he put a culvert so he can access it? Then we would have no access off of foothills and that would, the neighbor, that would alleviate a lot of our concerns. Um, because what we're looking at and something in the very second photo, I think, that was put up, you can see how the road bends. That's the issue with foothills. You, your turn, then you have to go more than 90 degrees. You have to cut back. And what happens is there's no markings on that 90 foot wide road. So when the cars turn the corner <clears throat> going northbound onto Foothills Drive, they are in the left-hand lane. All right, had it happened to me last week, I had a slam on my brakes, for the, the gentleman that turned off of First Street to get out of my lane. Now imagine if someone is ahead of him because they're turning into the foothill storage and he swings into the lane. You can't see, there is a bend there, you can't see, all right? So why isn't, if, if access has to be granted in on a, a second entrance, which we really prefer not to, for the many reasons you just mentioned, one is erosion and water runoff, why isn't the county then proposing and putting in a turn lane there? We, de we deal with that all day long, all right? It's one of the busiest roads in town because people prefer to go up first rather than Oracle, all right? So I swear we have more traffic between first and Ina than we do at or up, up and down Oracle. So yes, we need to consider people coming out of this subdivision and all these houses making a left on the first. That's what we all do. So just by writing it off and saying, ah, it's not very busy, you need, you need to do a traffic study. I think that you'll find that that's not at all accurate. And I did protest, all right? I am the one, I signed the form. So I'm not sure if your numbers of who protested was accurate. Um, also, um, we are concerned about the homeless there. Um, a fence that is low just allows people to hop over it and shelter around the facility at night, all right? We, we don't want high lights blasting it, but we also want to know that the homeless isn't encamping right down below us, all right, for the obvious reasons. Um, And then I also wanted to ask, you mentioned earlier on the presentation, if the a couple additional lots that are still available, if they will ever be granted 
um, building permits. Is this the one of, of many other buildings that he proposes to put on the other side of the wash? That's also my concern. I think that's it. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Wolf. Uh, would anyone else in the audience like to be heard on this case? Yes, I would like to uh, present for Ken Scoville, who is a recognized party in this. He is presenting at another uh, seminar tonight, and he has asked me to read his letter. And it's Ken Scoville. He lives at 5002 North Campana. And I am Sharon Hammond, and I live at 960 East Foothills Drive. Thank and you. This Please is go Ken's, ahead. Yes, this go is ahead. Ken's letter that he would like uh, to have read. Northridge Villas has been my home for 22 years. I use Foothills Drive every day, and the traffic is always going too fast, turning off First Avenue or coming from the east on Foothills Drive. The topography causes blind spots, and the steep downhill grade enhances the velocity issue. A new roadway onto Foothills, where it is proposed, is just wrong from a safety issue. The first two storage buildings were fine, and I did not oppose them. This project seems to be a squeeze together and bringing traffic into a residential area. The squeezed issue also impacts the natural undisturbed buffer that we now have on Foothills Drive between the other storage units, especially the crest or the hill with the saguaros. There needs to be a setback that will maintain this natural undisturbed landscape. If the project could be downsized so that the entrance and the necessary commerce could be maintained off First Avenue as it is now, I would not oppose a third building. If this rezoning as currently proposed is approved, the project will be another monument as to why county residents should oppose annexation by the city of Tucson and perpetuity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would anyone else in the audience like to be heard on this case? Uh, hearing no one, Mr. Underwood, do you want to say anything further? Um, yes, Mr. Urino, I'll, I'll keep it brief. I, I just wanted to clear up a couple of things. Um, to the gentleman that was speaking about uh, pedestrian access, I just wanted to clarify that we will have uh, a sidewalk connection out to Foothills Drive um, and some and some sidewalk along the frontage there of, of, of our site. And then... Um, I also just wanted to, to make it clear that this will be, a, I mentioned the site and or, or the, the fence around the site, and I wanted to make it clear that this will be a secure facility. Uh, it, it won't it won't have um, you know transient activity occurring on site and, and folks um, jumping over that fence. There, there will be security cameras and, and whatnot. Um, and then um, yeah, I think beyond that, just to just to point out that, you know, the the access point there along Foothills Drive would be this property's legal access point, um, you know, along along the street that it abuts there, and so that's uh, essentially why we're proposing to make that work, and uh, and it will be designed to City of Tucson standards. It will be um, a slope that um, can be accommodated along that driveway and will accommodate drainage as well. So um, I, I meant to ask before, how many storage units will there be? I didn't see that in the material you submitted. Um, and, and Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it will be no more than 200 units. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, based on this, the, the average unit size there, there will be 200 at most. Yeah, I, I saw the 200. I should have been able to do the math myself, but I didn't do it. I apologize. <laughs> uh, Mr. Underwood, uh, how long would it take for you to get a traffic study, traffic safety study on the proposed proposal to use Foothills Drive as the sole, I guess, access to this parcel? Um, I'm not sure how long it would take. We'll, we would have to contact a traffic engineer and, and it would be whatever their, their timing is. Sure. Um, but we would be amenable to a, a condition stating that that uh, a traffic study would be needed, certainly. Well, there's always the issue then of what happens if things don't go as one hopes. 
so it's probably better um, from, I, I won't presume to speak for you or your client, but probably better for the process even to have that in hand because we all, uh, I'm a glass half full person, but what if it turns out not to be the case? So uh, so here, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna continue the hearing for, um, let me check real quick, for a shorter period of time. Uh, and then we can reset, you know, I'm constrained by the 30 day yep. maximum. So we can, um, we can try to get it done within that 30 days. And if we don't, then we will um, request another, we'll, we'll figure out how much more time we sure. need and request another uh, continuance. If, okay, if, if, that, if that's, if I think that makes more sense that way, if you are able to do it, we don't unnecessarily delay. And if you're not, then we can always, we can always deal with it then. So, so I'm looking Mr. at May 20. We have a, the hearing scheduled, um, Mr. Zunger, for the May 25th already. So let's do that. So we'll, we're going to continue this hearing. I'm not going to close the public hearing. We're continuing the hearing, and thank you, Mr. Beal, to May 25th. And at that time, uh, we'll get back together, and you can tell me, here's your you? traffic study, or I need more time. How's that, Mr. Underwood? That sounds great. Okay. All right. Can I get uh, just one point of clarification? Could we get some uh, guidance on scope of what you want in that traffic sure. study? Absolutely. We, we okay. certainly are going to want to meet the needs of the residents. And if and if it means that that's a turning lane or something else that could be beneficial to traffic there, we we would like to make sure we do what's, what's kind of going to be preferred by everyone else and make sure the traffic study is covering exactly what the, the main points of... Uh, the issue there at the intersection and how we could accommodate that. So if there's, I don't know sure. who's going to give us kind of guidance on what the scope of that study should be, but we'd want to make sure we do something that, you know, is going to, is going to maybe provide some solutions. Mr. Schultz, I really appreciate your input on that. That's an excellent suggestion. I will just tell you from my point of view, uh, what I'm hearing from the residents include uh, turning ability from uh, Foothills Drive, uh, the right-hand turn into the development. I assume it also includes the left-hand turns out of the development, whether, the first out, day out. whether there needs to be uh, some kind of turning lane there or deacceleration lane, if there's even room to fit that kind of thing there, whether it would be appropriate to have a left turn out only from the development uh, onto Foothills Drive so folks don't just take a right out and meander on through the whole of Foothills Drive to get back down to river because they don't want to deal with the traffic. And I got to tell you, you know, that traffic comes pretty fast and furious down First Avenue, both up and down First Avenue. Uh, but that's not your problem to deal with as, as a, you know, owner of a single parcel. So that that's what I'm thinking. I, I would like, I would like it also to, I mean, I, I don't mean to, inject where I shouldn't be, but just, you've got your engineers probably, just make sure that grade is gonna work. Yes. And then the last part is, I think the traffic study should also indicate whether um, access for construction over your, I know you've got those bollards there, but access for construction, does that really work off Foothills Drive or not? Obviously your traffic expert will tell you what he or she thinks, but those are the issues that I hear. May I say something? Sure, go ahead. Okay. You say um, who you are, though. My name is Darsha Doran, and I have been talking to CAT number seven, which is the other HOA, and Ken Ellis, who's the president, suggested possibly getting permission to have uh, use the uh, county land and make the ingress and egress on uh, First Avenue. We have had a number of accidents of people making, attempting to make left-hand turns. It's a crazy intersection. Some people actually go down, down um, Soledad and to use the light at River Road. And some people go use Northridge to go up and come out at um, Estelle or at uh, uh, Via Entrada. 
because that is more of a there the, the the entrance is narrow there it's just very difficult you take your life into your hands doing it and i think all of this traffic is only going to make it worse Th thank, thank you. you for your suggestion uh and that's it can i say one more thing yes you may um um, again, Tammy Wolf, 5043 North Campana Drive. I live right behind the property. Um, if you're going to come out of that driveway, let's say, sir, you said 10%. So I'm just, I don't know if you can see my hand, but whatever 10% looks like to you. Remember, how are you going to see? Because your nose is higher than your butt. All right. So you're at a disadvantage to be able, even be able to see to make a left out of there. I don't know if we're, all, if we're all that concerned to them making a right, it's a big area, whatever, but making a left, how are they going to see who's coming down the hill and who's coming from the left of them? If they're like this, something to think about. That's a good point. So Mr. Schultz uh, and Mr. Underwood, site visibility is gonna be an issue, which is uh, commonly understood by some folks and uh, that should be part of it. All right, anything, anything further, Mr. Underwood? Uh, no, sir. We will uh, we'll make sure we get a traffic study that does a turn lane warrant analysis and um, and looks at site visibility as well. Okay. So we'll see you back on the 25th. So we have one more case to hear this evening, and that is case, let me find my note, PPENT 0123-00010, Tucson Water. Are we going to go out for dinner now? I'm not. I'm not uh, Mr. Beal, is that you or is Mr. Slater still outside the Fox? I am. <laughs> Down by Suntran. It's a little quieter. There's like music happening over there. Um, so this is a special exception request for a modification to some setbacks and uh, lot coverage requirements, um, which, as the applicant has indicated, are required for uh, maneuverability of vehicles on site for maintenance of the well equipment. Um, they're adding some landscaping uh, to sort of like offset the, the need to take up the uh, additional room. Um, there was one comment in approval and one comment uh, against. The comment against, it should be noted, was uh, the comments were indicated they were against any rezonings, but that's not what's being considered here. Um, so uh, okay. take that how you will. Um, but yes, that supports the uh, special exception. Thank you, Mr. Slater. Ms. Wellett, did you want to be heard on this case? Uh, just really briefly for the record. Good evening, Mr. Arino. Good to see you. My name is Lexi Wellett, and I'm a project manager here at the Planning Center. On behalf of Tucson Water, the request is to uh, process a special exception to equip a, a well that was drilled uh, a couple of years back. And so I know you're familiar with this process. I, I'm not going to belabor it um, beyond what Mr. Uh, uh, Slater's presentation was. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. I do not. Would anyone else in the audience like to be heard on this case? Uh, hearing no one, I'm closing the hearing on this case. Uh, I want to thank everyone for their participation. Hope you all have a safe and lovely evening. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you. you.